as soon as Brother Brant came across the expression in prayer about having a hearing ear and a seeing eye, my mind went to the scripture in Proverbs that a hearing ear and a seeing eye is of the Lord, from the Lord. And we certainly, certainly believe that. And uh, it is the truth. It's the truth whether you believe it or not, but I'm glad I believe that truth this yeah. morning. It's certainly good to see each one. I do have a continued interest in your prayers today that you would pray for me the time that I stand and pray for yourself. That the Lord would indeed bless us to have seeing eyes and hearing ears. This morning for a little while, we're going to change subject matter today. I feel impression. Uh, I trust from the Lord upon my heart and mind, and if I'm able to preach that which is upon my heart and mind. This morning I'd like to preach to you some things and bring to you from the subject matter of concerning the subject matter of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, uh, the, the Spirit of the Son of God. He has sent forth uh, the spirit of his son. So he is the spirit of the son. He is the spirit of truth. Three times there in John it tells us that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So some thoughts and some things this morning. And, uh, in a, and also in a way of a practical sense. And uh, more specifically, as the scripture instructs us, and it is Jesus is preaching uh, these words that, uh, that he specifically gives us this admonition. And uh, so we would turn this morning to begin with in, in uh, Luke chapter 11. In Luke chapter 11, and just get to the verse that, uh, and, and we'll go back up above this in just a moment, the Lord willing. <clears throat> but I would like to bring this forth to you. As I said, and what I was going to say specifically concerning the Holy Spirit, some things about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Uh, they, this is all one and the same. This is, this is the person of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but here, Jesus specifically gives an admonition in that latter part of verse 13 and says, How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that asked Him? So here is an admonition. Here is an exhortation. Here is an encouragement from the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. And this is his disciples, uh, not just in the first century, but in all the centuries uh, down through these 2,000 years, uh, that we should ask our Heavenly Father. We should pray to God that he would give us the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not concerning regeneration. I, uh, nothing of this uh, uh, that we'll preach this morning. We know that the Holy Ghost is the agent. Uh, he is uh, the one that comes uh, and does that immediate and direct work by the life-giving voice of the Spirit of God. Uh, Jesus said plainly in John chapter 3 that the wind uh, bloweth uh, where it listeneth. Uh, in other words, where it pleaseth, thou hearest the sound thereof and cannot tell from whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. All the elect of God uh, after conception, uh, amen, uh, are born of the Spirit of God by the life-giving voice of the Son of God. And you don't ask for that. Uh, 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 it, it, is, it is not that that you're concerned with until God does it. Amen. Uh, God does that work. We are totally uh, inactive. We are totally passive. Uh, we don't ask. But here we have uh, Jesus teaching and says, How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that asked Him? 
So there is a sense, there is something here concerning the Holy Spirit, concerning the Holy Ghost uh, that you can have if you ask the Heavenly Father. Now, brothers and sisters, this is very plain and this is very serious. Uh, we need uh, the administration of the Spirit of God. We need the leadership of the Spirit of God. We need the guidance of the Spirit of God. We need the teaching of the Spirit of God. Amen. For our life to be productive, uh, to redound to the honor and glory of God in a way of discipleship in our life. We cannot live a life of discipleship without the Spirit, without the manifestation of the Spirit without the light and the illumination and the encouragement and the deliverance of the Spirit of God. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot uh, muster it up. We cannot summon uh, the Spirit. We must ask. And I believe that this is a continuance of asking, amen, and receiving and being filled and being renewed uh, in the Spirit in a way of discipleship uh, that we can uh, render uh, and pay our vows and pay our service uh, unto the Lord as the Scriptures admonish and exhort us uh, to do. And we cannot rely upon the arm of the flesh, but we must rely upon the Spirit. We can only live a discipled life by living and walking in the Spirit. This is why Jesus uh, gives this here. I'll turn back there in just a moment, the Lord willing, but I want to uh, set back before you a couple of verses that is uh, uh, in, in Psalm 147. Psalm 147 in verse 10 and 11. He says, He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of the of a man. Oh, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, 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 the strength, our strength, our help is not in how strong our horse is. Uh, now, this is relative language to the economy of that day and time. Uh, but you can make the practical application. Uh, no matter what uh, uh, we feel accomplished in uh, or what ability that we feel that we have from a natural standpoint, it will not aid or help you uh, in living a spirit-filled life. Uh, amen. The Bible teaches us uh, not to be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, it's not the carnal things that are important. Uh, uh, it's not the influence uh, uh, the intoxication uh, uh, of the natural things. We, we're certainly not relying upon that in order to live a spirit-filled life, a discipled life, uh, a life that is honoring and glory and, uh, unto God. Uh, you children, you need uh, the Spirit of the Lord. You need the influence of the Holy Holy Spirit uh, to strengthen you and to help you uh, to obey your parents. As you get older, uh, uh, coming on you into years and teenage years, uh, uh, there is that of this human nature that wants to be rebellious uh, and wants to rebel, uh, uh, to rebel against your parents, to rebel, uh, re rebel against authority and so forth. Uh, but it is pleasing, well pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, for you children uh, to be submissive and obedient unto your parents. Uh, amen. That's what the Bible says. Uh, but you'll need the Holy Spirit to help you. Uh, amen. You'll need the Spirit of the Lord. You'll need to walk in the Spirit, uh, to live in the Spirit, uh, to meditate upon the Word of God, uh, uh, to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Uh, amen. As Jesus said, uh, uh, notice verse 11. In Psalm 147, the Lord taketh pleasure 
in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. This is who the Lord takes pleasure in. Uh, uh, this is who uh, uh, redounds to the honor and glory of God, no, not those that delight in the strength of their horse or in the strength uh, uh, of some mechanism uh, or a resource that they have of themselves. Uh, no, uh, and uh, uh, and we don't take ple and he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. That's all about man's strength, man's ability. You know, outside uh, of the Spirit of God, Samson was like any other man. Amen. He was like any other man. It was only in and by the Spirit that he was endued with power and with strength uh, uh, to do what he did and to accomplish uh, what he accomplished. Uh, but, uh, but when he didn't walk in a discipled way, uh, uh, when he didn't walk in the Spirit, and when he fulfilled the lust of the flesh, he got in trouble. Uh, amen. He got in trouble every time. Uh, oh, uh, and, and particularly the time uh, when he went to sleep uh, in Delilah's lap, uh, uh, and they cut his hair off, uh, and so forth. And the Philistines uh, uh, came, uh, and, and uh, uh, she said, uh, Samson, wake up, the Philistines are upon thee. He said, I'll arise and shake myself like I've done all these other times before. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, what he didn't realize was uh, this time, uh, when he was about to shake himself, he was about, uh, in other words, to test himself, to see where he stood, to get himself ready, but he was, he didn't have the strength. He didn't have the power like he had had. Oh, Jesus told his disciples to go and tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued, endued, endowed, amen, given this power from on high. We've got to have power for service. Amen. We've got to have the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. We've got to have the gifts and the blessings of the Spirit and the whereabouts. Amen. Of the light and understanding is through the Spirit. Amen. That we bear the fruit of the Spirit. You don't bear the fruit of the Spirit out of your carnal nature. There you manifest the works of the flesh out of the carnal of fleshly nature. Nature, but it's out of the spirit nature. It's out, uh, amen, of begging for the filling and renewing and strengthening uh, of the Holy Spirit of God. And as Jesus said, uh, amen, to ask the Heavenly Father, uh, amen, to ask Him for, amen, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, to me, the companion verse uh, uh, there in Proverbs 21 and 31 uh, goes right along with the Psalm 147 and 10. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Uh, you know, the expression in Psalm 3 and 8, uh, amen, that says that salvation belongeth uh, unto the Lord. Uh, amen, that means that deliverance uh, belongs unto the Lord. We've got to ask Him. Uh, amen, we've got to ask Ask him for that deliverance. Uh, we've got to bow before King Jesus. Uh, oh, uh, and knock and ask and seek at mercy's door. Uh, oh, we have not because we ask not. Uh, oh, uh, uh, to ask him, it's his good pleasure. Uh, oh, fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. Uh, amen. The benefits and the blessings in the kingdom, uh, the gospel kingdom of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Also, Jonah chapter 2. Uh, amen. Jonah came to the conclusion uh, uh, there uh, in the, uh, the, the belly uh, of the whale in the, the deeps, uh, uh, in the bottom of the mountains of the waters, uh, oh, and said that salvation is of the Lord. Uh, amen. Any of our deliverance uh, is of the Lord. Uh, and it's not by might uh, nor by power, but by my spirit. Uh, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, amen. That's the way that it is. Uh, that's the way that you achieve. Uh, uh, that's the way uh, that you move forward. Uh, that's the way that you prosper and be in health even as your soul uh, uh, does prosper. Uh, amen. It's to ask the Lord and to seek the Lord and to beg as beggars at mercy's door. Uh, amen. Uh, our God is great uh, and our God is merciful and he is so uh, loving uh, and his mercies are new. His mercies are fresh 
every morning. Thank God for that. Now I want to turn back here to Luke chapter 11. And I want to give you the setting for this in these verses up above. And uh, for the sake of time, we're going to deal just expressively with verse 9 through 13. Jesus says, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, each one of those words have the E-T-H on them. That means continuous. <laughs> Amen. Continuous. Uh, not a one time, but keep on keeping on. And that would, that would go in light with the, uh, with the lesson that Jesus taught uh, concerning praying right back above those verses. And you read those uh, uh, later on uh, and also tie it in with Luke chapter 18. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I just wanted to throw that in there as a side note. Uh, now listen to what Jesus said in verse, starting in verse 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Notice the lesson that Jesus is teaching. If ye then being evil, if you being natural men, you being a natural father, prone to sin, prone you have a, an Adamic nature. In other words, uh, you're evil. Uh, you have that inbred. You have that which is uh, inherited and so forth. Uh, and, and of course, children of God, you have that. You set every one of you sitting here on this pew. Uh, uh, you would be in this category here uh, if you then been evil. I don't think the Lord is talking about uh, uh, the wicked, wicked here in the sense of evil right here. Uh, I, I believe he's talking about from the standpoint that we are, uh, are a natural individual. Uh, and as he's talking about father and son, uh, that in this context that a father is a natural father and he's prone uh, to evil uh, thoughts, evil ways and so forth. Uh, but Jesus says, if ye then being evil... Know how to give good gifts. Yes, you have that dynamic nature. You have that, but yet uh, you have uh, uh, the Spirit of God within your heart. You've been born of the Spirit of God. Uh, God in you, the hope of glory. Uh, there is that then, that ability and that desire uh, to give good gifts uh, unto your children uh, uh, not only to your children but to others uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you uh, amen that's what Jesus taught uh, do good unto all men especially those uh, of the household of faith uh, uh, the exhortation be careful to maintain good works uh, oh so here he says now uh, uh, you're in this shape in this condition uh, uh, but you are able to you can give good gifts in your children how much more how much more oh notice that how much more shall your heavenly father amen our heavenly father just as his son as the bible says that his son amen was separate from sinners jesus christ amen could not sin he didn't have the adamic nature to sin with he never sinned no guile found in his mouth he was separate from sinners amen uh, so uh, we understand and so our heavenly father is so is uh, amen the trinity uh, that makes up the godhead uh, three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the holy ghost this is what we're talking about we're talking about the person of the holy ghost we're talking about as he is mentioned in here father son and holy ghost as old line primitive baptist we believe in a divine trinity. We believe in three man, three persons, uh, uh, the offices, uh, uh, the position, uh, amen, of three, uh, uh, but one. Uh, we believe uh, uh, that there are three that bear record uh, and that these three are 
one. So when the Bible speaks of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, or Spirit of God, Spirit of Truth, amen, this is speaking of the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is real. The Spirit of God is real. And uh, uh, this individual of the Holy Spirit that I'm speaking about this morning uh, is different uh, uh, from where you have the expression, especially in the Revelation letter, when it will mention the seven spirits of God. Uh, now, uh, it doesn't mean that God's divided up. Now, we know that God is a spirit. Amen? God is a spirit. But you see, seven is the Bible number of perfection. I'm satisfied with that. I believe that. I, I believe it's true. Amen? I believe I see it throughout the scriptures. Uh, you see, the number of man is one less. Six. That's the number of man. Man is not perfection. Man is lacking. God created man good and very good. Uh, uh, but he still, even at that point, was not perfection. And now uh, he's certainly nowhere close to it. He's actually 666. Uh, that is man multiplied. Man uh, multiplied and steeped in imperfection. But God is perfection. And I believe that's what represents when it speaks of the seven spirits of God. And, and those will be small capital. Uh, uh, but where the Bible in the context is speaking of the spirit. Uh, amen. Uh, spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. This, he is a person uh, just like the Father and the Son. Oh, and, and so here is, is Jesus uh, sets forth this lesson. The emphasis that I want you to see and understand is that Jesus is telling, amen, and preaching to his disciples and he's telling us, it's here for us, uh, amen, uh, that how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Now, we have the sister text in Matthew chapter 7. Which will also help us to understand. And I'm not going to go back up through about the bread, the fish, and the egg. But here in verse 11, he says, If ye then be an evil. As I said, I believe the sense of that is, If ye then be a natural, a natural father, prone to sin, stooped and steeped in that Adamic nature, but yet you know how to give good gifts unto your children. You know how to do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? There is no contradiction here. Amen. It's one and the same. Luke records by inspiration of the Spirit, asked of the, asked for the Holy Ghost. Shall he give the Holy Ghost to them that ask? And here Matthew, by inspiration uh, of the Spirit, records and gives, give good things. It's not the Holy Spirit that which is good. Certainly he is. He is good. Uh, and God is good. Many t Several times in the Scriptures it says that God is good. I want to tell you, God is the is perfect. Perfection of good. God is fully good. Uh, amen. There's no bad in him. Uh, and I put it that way for you children. There's nothing bad in God. There's no liability in God. God is good. God is perfect. God is complete. God is total. God is to be praised and honored and worshipped and adored. So we need to ask him and he will give us good things. He will give us the, uh, the Holy Spirit if we ask. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He that seeketh, keep on keeping on. He that knocketh, keep on knocking. Oh, keep on. He that asketh, uh, keep on uh, asking. I want you to understand also this morning, and I know that most of you do, if not all, uh, children may not have as much understanding of it, uh, but children, I want you to notice uh, uh, there in Genesis uh, chapter 1, in the very start, uh, 
uh, that the scripture tells us that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God amen this spirit of God here in this context this is the Holy Spirit amen this is the spirit of truth uh, this is the spirit of the Son this is the spirit of God Christ. Amen. This is the person of the Holy Ghost that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So you see, amen, the Holy Spirit, amen, right here in the creation of God the Father in the creation, God the Son in the creation, uh, God the Holy Ghost uh, in the creation, uh, not being created but doing the creating. Uh, amen. Uh, you know, brothers and sisters, uh, all the lights came on at the same time. Uh, uh, don't ever lose sight of that. Uh, uh, someone said, how could that be? Uh, how, could they, how did they all come on at the same time? Because God said, let there be light. Amen. That's how the, all the lights came on at the same time. Now I've told you about all I know about that. Amen. But I believe what the Bible says. I may not can dot every I and cross every T. Amen. But I'm just going to believe what the Bible says. You know there's a lot of times that by faith we just need to stand on what the Bible says and believe it. Yeah. Well glory to God. Amen. Just believe it. Just hold fast to it because God said it. Amen. And that's what he said. Oh, uh, God said what he said. He said it. Amen. He hadn't took it back and he's not going to take it back. Oh, no. Uh, his uh, uh, promises are yea and amen. Uh, God is the truth. Let every man be a liar. Uh, God is the truth. Uh, if there's any opposition from man against what God's word says, that man man don't count. Uh, amen. What counts is God. Uh, I tell you that it's better uh, to obey God uh, than to obey man. Uh, we want to keep the, the laws, uh, the civil laws, uh, but where uh, they oppose and where they contradict, uh, amen, the, the commandments of God, uh, it is better uh, to obey God. Uh, that's exactly what the apostles said in Acts chapter 5. Uh, when they had been put into prison, when the apostles were put into prison, uh, amen, for preaching Jesus and preaching the resurrection uh, of the dead and for healing folks, uh, uh, that God gave them power to heal, uh, uh, to demonstrate uh, and to prove uh, uh, what they were uh, preaching was from God by the signs and the miracles uh, uh, that they wrought in the name of Jesus Christ even as Peter said to the lame man silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth arise up and walk in that 29th verse uh, Peter uh, said uh, Peter and the other apostles answered uh, them when they said didn't we in other words didn't we command you and straightway command you that you shouldn't teach in that name and here you are doing it uh, oh the Lord brought them out of the prison though and they were right back out doing it because the angel of the Lord had brought them out and told them to go stand in the temple and to speak all the words of this life uh, Amen. And what did Peter say in verse 29 of Acts 5? He's, he answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Then it comes on down to verse 32. And by inspiration, Peter's still preaching by the Holy Ghost. Oh, you know, the apostle Peter writes in his writing in the epistle and says that we preach with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Oh, uh, the, uh, Jesus preached by the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost in the River Jordan. He was blessed and given the Spirit without measure. Uh, he was anointed the high priest. Uh, oh, uh, and he went about uh, uh, preaching that everlasting gospel. Uh, and the time came 
Oh, uh, Jesus is high priest. While he was here those three and a half years, uh, uh, he was uh, he offered spiritual sacrifices. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, he gave praise uh, from his lips unto the Father. Uh, and uh, uh, he taught uh, uh, the words of the Father that he had received from the Father. Uh, they were uh, the Father's and they were his uh, uh, that he had received. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, but the time came that he is the high priest who had been anointed a high priest in the river Jordan uh, upon the altar of his own deity he offered himself that supreme sacrifice that sacrifice once and for all but Peter says we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him did you hear that amen God has given the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. What is the admonition that Jesus gave? Ask the Father. Amen. Ask how much more will your heavenly Father. Oh, give good things. Give the Holy Spirit. Amen. To them that ask. Amen. Here Peter said, whom God hath given. Talking about the Holy Ghost. God hath given to them that obey him. You know, Jesus told uh, those disciples uh, there in the, the closing of, of, of Luke, uh, uh, there toward those, those last verses, before Jesus went away, he had led them out as far as Bethany, and he raised his hands and, and, and uh, blessed them. And there in Luke chapter 24, in verse 49, he says, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. They had their instructions. They had their marching orders. And uh, uh, I believe that that is why uh, there in Acts chapter 1, uh, that those two men in white apparel, while Jesus was being received up into the cloud and lifted up into heaven, uh, that, they, that they spake uh, those words unto the disciples. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem. They went. In other words, those two men in white apparel, those angels manifested as men that spoke to them. In other words, were saying, I don't just hang around here now. You go on back. You go on to Jerusalem. You do what he said. You obey him. The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. Jesus had told them there in Acts chapter 1 in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Uh, here's a baptism with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Here is the gifts, uh, amen, of the Spirit, the blessings of the Spirit that children of God can have in a way of obedience. Uh, amen. That these apostles uh, did not have hitherto before. Uh, uh, yes, they were born again. Uh, if they had died, they'd have went to glory. Uh, they didn't uh, wouldn't go into Jerusalem to be filled with the Holy Ghost in order to be made fit to live with God in glory. They were already fit, uh, amen, by the birth of the Spirit, being born of the Spirit of God, being born from above, uh, being born again, uh, as the Scripture teaches. Uh, but here is something they didn't have. Uh, they didn't have yet, uh, amen, that Jesus is telling them uh, to go uh, and tarry uh, there, but ye shall I'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Uh, we know there's orders of people that run this uh, uh, to, to a far extreme uh, outside of the scriptures uh, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and then there are those that totally deny uh, the working of the Holy Ghost uh, in the church uh, since you have the canon of scriptures. Uh, I want to tell you brothers and sisters, yes the scriptures are by the Holy Ghost uh, uh, but when uh, uh, the canon of scriptures was written 
uh, amen, uh, uh, when these writers wrote, uh, uh, and afterwards, uh, amen, the Holy Ghost didn't cease, the Holy Ghost didn't go back to heaven, the Holy Ghost is still here, the Holy Ghost uh, is still uh, uh, working among God's people, and in God's people, and through God's people, and equipping, and empowering uh, uh, God's disciples in a way of obedience, uh, amen, and doing with power for service. Well, glory to God, I believe it's the truth. Amen, I believe it's the truth in Christ Jesus. There are those that just started in the mid-1800s. Amen, that go to that other extreme ditch. You got them over here in this ditch. You got them over here in this ditch. Amen, but I want to tell you, I respect this book, but as much as I respect this book... Amen. It's not, amen, telling, it's not telling me. I want to tell you, you can't lie to this book. Amen, but you can lie to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Understand that. You can't lie to this book, but you can lie to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then they say that the Spirit of God is gone. I want to tell you, amen, the Holy Ghost. Let me finish up right here, and then we'll just turn to it. Uh, he said, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. In other words, you'll receive this power to do what I have called you to do. Amen. Let's go back to the fifth chapter of Acts. And you're going to find there, <clears throat> this is in the New Testament church. And you're going to find here two people, Ananias and Sapphira. Sapphira was the wife of Ananias. And the Bible says that they sold a possession and they kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, in other words, she had knowledge of it and also agreed uh, to the scheme that they uh, had, had schemed up and brought a certain part and laid the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why Satan? Fill thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. Now, they weren't commanded to sell the property. They weren't under any direct uh, command to do it. They weren't under any direct uh, command that if they did do it, uh, that uh, they should give it all. Uh, it was theirs to do with, uh, to give as the Spirit would impress upon them and bless them with. Uh, but they were covetous, but yet they wanted to appear uh, to be some great somethings. Uh, 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 and so they schemed up a lie, and Peter said, you haven't lied uh, un, uh, to, uh, to us in keeping back part, in other words, uh, but, but you have lied to the Holy Ghost. Now I want to tell you, you can only lie to a person. Amen. I believe that, that this text proves out. Amen. That this, what this, the scripture, amen, is teaching us of the person of the Holy Ghost and teaching us of the office of the Holy Ghost. Amen. His administrative work in the church of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the, he, he went on to, to say... And we know what happened here for the sake of time, going to verse 9. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Amen. This Spirit of the Lord here, this is the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, because the Word of God is His own best interpreter. I tell you, the Word of God will shine a whole lot of light on them commentaries. <laughs> Amen. If you didn't get it, you just think about it. It'll come to you. Amen. But feel thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. The Bible is its own best commentary. Amen. And so, so here, uh, the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is the Spirit of God. Amen. It is the Holy Ghost. I want you to notice with me, if you would, in the book of John, those sermons, those discourses that Jesus preached before His crucifixion, just shortly before that particular time, when, when Jesus, Jesus says, uh, remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Here in, in John chapter 14, Jesus said, starting in verse 16, And I will pray the Father... Now this goes back. Jesus said, I will pray the Father. 
Jesus said, ask, ask, seek, and knock. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him, give good things to them that ask him. Jesus said, uh, I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter. This other comforter is the Holy Ghost. Jesus was uh, their comforter while he was here. He comforted them. He was their lead. He was their guide. He was their teacher. But now he's, he's given them this, this assurance. Oh, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Truth. I want you to uh, notice that. Uh, notice also while I'm right there with that expression, I'll turn over right quick to the Roman letter. Just hold your uh, fingers back over there to John chapter 14. But in Romans chapter 8 and verse, verse 9. Well, let's just start in verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Amen. In the Spirit. Now, this is in the Holy Ghost. You're in the, you're in the Spirit of God. Oh, but you're not in the flesh. You, but you are in the Spirit. How are you going to keep from being in the flesh? Because you've got a new nature. You've got a born-again nature. But still, yet you ha you're dual. You do have that old nature. Uh, so, uh, you're born of the Spirit. So then the, the way to uh, walk in that uh, influence and illumination and in that uh, help of the new man, uh, uh, that new creation, uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory, uh, then uh, we are to uh, pray uh, for the Spirit, for the infilment of the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine. Don't be under the influence of natural things oh but be filled with the spirit so he says if so be that the spirit of God notice that the spirit of God amen this is uh, the Holy Ghost uh, this is uh, amen the spirit of truth if the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his <clears throat> notice that if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. So the Holy Ghost is also the Spirit of God. He's the Spirit of truth. He's the Spirit of the Son. He's the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Uh, he is the Spirit of God that moved upon the face of the deep. We see the work and the operation of the third person of the Holy Trinity of the Godhead all through the Scriptures. And He is the, the agent of administration, of the will of God, the will of the Son, which is the same, amen, in the gospel kingdom, uh, ordering it, giving the help and the aid to carry forth in the way that the scriptures teach us uh, to do so. Now, you go back over here to John. He tells his father in 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now I submit unto you that the apostles had this in a great measure. And I believe in the context of it and I uh, believe uh, that in, in the, the sense of it uh, that it was a great measure of, this, of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Spirit unto the apostles in the first century. But the Holy Ghost did not leave this earth and leave the gospel church uh, at the death of the apostles. Uh, gee, he came. He will be here for the duration. Now we don't have the understanding. We don't have uh, even as he told those apostles and when you, you'll stand before kings, uh, you'll, you'll stand before those in authority and think not what you shall say in that hour. Uh, for I will give you, the Holy Ghost shall teach you and give you in that self same hour what to say. Now I believe the apostles had that. And I believe, I believe that the, through the Holy Ghost they did that. But that's that measure that they had. I tell you, I have to dig for it now. Amen. I have to dig. I have to pray. I have to just keep on going through this Bible. 
Amen. I have to keep on going through the scriptures. I have to keep being refreshed uh, uh, upon it. Uh, uh, because I assure you that if I don't, uh, uh, you'll be able to tell it. Uh, and uh, I'll walk out of this stand with my head hanging way down to my knees. Uh, I'll be ashamed. Uh, uh, that's why the apostle exhorted Timothy uh, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh, uh, God's ministers, called ministers, are workmen. They are workmen. And uh, uh, we have to study. We have to continuously refresh, beg for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beg God uh, to give us uh, utterance and freedom uh, to free our mind. You, you see, uh, a lot of times it's, it's not what you've got uh, on your mind is what you need to get off your mind concerning the preacher uh, to get it off your mind and you need the Lord to help you to get some things cleared out and off your mind the carnal things the things uh, uh, that you've been encumbered with uh, and so forth and on uh, in order to have freedom uh, oh as our old brethren uh, have, uh, have used the expression uh, and I like it uh, that you'd be able to travel about in the fertile fields of the gospel I tell you these fields are fertile, amen, uh, to bring out a, a treasure, both old and new. Uh, uh, if you study, uh, if you read, uh, if you meditate, and if you ask and seek and beg, uh, amen, God, amen, to be with you as a minister to come before the waiting congregation, uh, uh, that God would fill you and bless you to bring those things to your remembrance and to help you uh, to be free from the encumberments of this world that would bog you down. Yeah. Oh, yes. Now, Jesus told them, told them and gave them this speaking of the Holy Ghost. One more verse here and we'll move on. In, in John chapter 15 and verse 26, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Three places right there I, I read to you where he's called the Spirit of truth. He's the Spirit of truth. He's the Spirit of the Son. Amen. He's the Spirit of God. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Ghost. All one in the same person that we are talking about. Now I'd like to direct your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, particularly in verse 3. Jesus blesses and gave forth those things that we've been reading that he gave. And it's the same with the Apostle Paul by inspiration of the Spirit who had the revelation from God by the Spirit. He said, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. I want to tell you, a, per a person that is filled with the Spirit, renewed in the Spirit, as the Scripture here says, no man speaking by the Spirit of God. Yeah. In other words, a person under the in, in, by the uh, nudging and, and, and urging and uh, guidance of the Word of God and the speaking forth. In other words, if, if anyone or from man speaking uh, and, and, and says that Jesus is accursed, uh, that Jesus is, is not the Christ, that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, we understand from the old age apostles John in his epistle, uh, uh, that if any man confesseth not that Jesus has come in the flesh, that man is Antichrist. Uh, uh, so here, as he says, uh, no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus 
is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. If we genuinely, with the correct motivation from our uh, heart, a heart that God, amen, is made good, the tree God has made good, uh, uh, we can only uh, do that. And we will, by the knowledge and understanding, uh, if we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we bow the knee to King Jesus, it's by the Holy Ghost. It's by the, uh, by the blessing, uh, by the light, by the illumination of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Amen. This is what he is uh, teaching us uh, here in this verse. So once again, we can see clearly and understand uh, the person of the Holy Ghost and how important uh, this office of administration uh, truly, truly is. You know, I, talk, I spoke of a group of people from the 1800s that got their start. And how that they're over in the other ditch. And they believe the Holy Ghost left when the apostles died off. And now you just have the canon of the book that God don't call men to the ministry. God don't lead by His Spirit. You just have the book. I respect this book. But I want to tell you, amen, the Holy Ghost is still here. Amen. amen. And God still calls men to the ministry by the Holy Ghost. This book don't call men to the ministry. Uh -uh. You can't lie to this book. You can lie to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I want you to understand that. But those same people will tell you that there was not anybody born of the Spirit in the Old Testament economy. Now think about that. There was no one born in the Spirit. Well, they just hadn't read Galatians. Well, if they read it, they probably put some other spin and twist on it. But let, and they're the very ones that'll say, let the Scripture speak where the Scriptures speak. <laughs> you know, and be silent where the Scriptures are silent. Well, let's let the Scriptures speak. Galatians chapter 4, here in verse 28 and verse 29. Now we... Brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit. Even so it is now. <clears throat> Just like, amen, we brethren right now... Paul is saying to the Galatians, just like you were born of the Spirit, just like we're born of the Spirit, Oh, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. Everyone is born by the Spirit of God. Amen. Of God's elect and that are born again. They're born by the Spirit. So here is Isaac who is in the Old Testament. Amen. Who is uh, several hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years uh, before this time. Uh, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him. We know that uh, Esau... Uh, and, and this is what, uh, uh, not, es not, not Esau, Ishmael. Uh, Ishmael uh, is what it's speaking of that is after the flesh persecuted him. You Bible readers know that. I'm not going to go back and, tell, and, and go back over that, uh, uh, that narrative. But, uh, but that was born after the Spirit. Born after the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Born from the Spirit. Born by the Spirit. That's what it's saying. So right here, amen, is proof positive uh, that someone was born of the Spirit of God, born after the Spirit of God in the Old Testament. Yeah. And I tell you, if Isaac was, so is from Adam, <laughs> from Genesis 1 and 1 to the last verses of Malachi, and then whatever years there was between Malachi and Matthew, uh, I want to tell you, God's been borning by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has been, amen, the administrative operator uh, of God.
God's work uh, by the Spirit. Uh, you'll find and read many times in the, in the New Testament uh, where it says that individuals uh, spoke by the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. It'll say of David uh, that he spoke by the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, just, just think about that. Oh, how wonderful uh, that is. But I submit unto you that, uh, that, that Isaac uh, was born of the Spirit of God. Amen. There in the Old Testament. And that these verses uh, certainly prove it. You know, another scripture that teaches us of the person of the Spirit and, and concerning it on this wise is here in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 where it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God until the day of redemption. Oh, uh, whether that be the day when you draw your last breath uh, or whether it be the day of the resurrection uh, when he'll have the last part of you uh, that he paid for, the bodily resurrection, uh, but you're sealed uh, by the Holy Ghost until the, until the day of redemption. And he has given a commandment here. He's given an exhortation. Don't you grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you want to know how you can grieve the Holy Spirit of God? And I'll just say this, I can't grieve these scriptures. Amen, but I grieve the Holy Ghost. Amen, I grieve the Holy Ghost. I, I believe you, you, you can grieve God. You can grieve the Son uh, in disobedience. God is pleased and well pleased in obedience. So therefore, the opposite of that, he'd be grieved in disobedience. Uh, we, know that, we know the Holy Ghost was grieved uh, with Ananias and Sapphira when they lied. You just march yourself right back up here to verse 25. And uh, uh, I, I believe uh, uh, that these verses put it into the context of verse 30 about grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. How can you grieve the Holy Spirit of God? He said, wherefore, putting away lying... Amen. Put away lying. As disciples of Christ, we need to be filled with the Spirit. Oh, that, uh, that we don't uh, uh, lie. Uh, oh, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the Holy Ghost. Uh, that was grievous to the Holy Spirit. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Don't lie, speak the truth. Be, uh, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more. This is all uh, having to do uh, if we don't do these, if we cease from these things, if we walk in a way of obedience, uh, it will be well pleasing unto the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, but if we uh, do these other things, uh, we will grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. We'll grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let him that stole still no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And then he says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, then he starts again down below it, that all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If we'll be obedient in these things right here, we won't grieve the Holy Ghost. We won't grieve. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God. Turn over with me to the last of the Thessalonian letter in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. Here is four words in this verse. Here are some real short verses right here. Some real short admonitions. Some real short uh, 
uh, exhortations, instructions. And in verse 19 of 1 Thessalonians 5, what does it say? Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. What's he talking about? Quench not. Quench not. Well, if you turn over just a couple of pages to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Stir up the Holy Ghost within you, the gift of the Spirit which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul's talking about the ministerial uh, gift uh, uh, in particular in this context to Timothy here. And he's telling him to stir it up. You see, if you're quenching something, you're putting it out. You're putting it down. Uh, what do you do with a fire to quench it? Uh, you put water on it. You smother it out. Uh, amen. Uh, the admonition is uh, don't quench it. Uh, quench not the spirit uh, of God. Oh, brothers and sisters, in our lives through prayer and meditation upon the Scriptures uh, and, and, and the usage of the Scriptures uh, and, and using them in our, in our lives, uh, what are we doing? We're stirring the fire. We're stirring. Uh, stir up our pure minds. Uh, uh, when you got a little fire there, uh, you don't want it to go out. You want it to, to blaze back up, uh, to catch back up to the material that is there. You stir it. Uh, you stir Stir those coals, them embers. Uh, oh, uh, uh, you see, it's got to. There, there's got to be some coals there. There's got to be some embers, or you can't stir it up and get a bigger fire. Hey Amen. We're talking about uh, in the sense of manifestation. Hey Amen. Of the Spirit in our lives. So we're not to quench the Spirit of God. Oh, but as as Ephesians five and eighteen, as I've already uh, said this morning. Uh, we're certainly not to, to quench it, but we're to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Filled with the Spirit. There's many more things that could be said on that line. I'll set one more thing before you, then we'll quit. In Hebrews chapter 9, in verse 8, in the first part of verse 9, he says, The Holy Ghost, this signifying, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present. Amen. The Holy Ghost signified. The Holy Ghost teaching and showing and giving forth. Amen. The tabernacle, the outer courts, the, the inner uh, place, the holy place, and then the holy of holies. Uh, amen. Were, were figures, uh, was, was, a, was a type, a shadow of that which was to come. Think about a shadow. Think about a real nice apple tree out here. All right. And this apple tree, it's got the trunk, it's got the limbs. And uh, it's in fruit. It's got some real pretty red apples on it. All right? It's got green leaves on it. But you know the shadow that is cast onto the ground, it's, it's just dark. It's just got the outward form. Right? It's just got the outward form of that apple tree. It, 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 it don't show you the, uh, the distinctions of the bark and all that's on the trunk and maybe the little knots that's on the trunk and so forth. It don't show uh, you the uh, the Pacific of the limbs and of the. Uh, it don't show you the green. It, it's it's just dark. It don't show you the green leaves. It don't show you the red apples. Oh no! But I tell you, hey man, the leaves and the apples have come. <laughs> hey man. Oh, but you see, it was the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. It worked there. Uh, as God was using to signify and to show that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. I want to tell you, amen, the most blessed way, the wonderful way into it is Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They couldn't go into the, there was a certain way to go into the Holy of Holies. And even that holy place, the people couldn't go in. The people had to stand without into the outer court. Only the priests that ministered could go. Uh, the Levites uh, uh, and those that were serving their turn in the priesthood could go into the holy place. And only the high priest could go into the holy of holies. 
bearing blood for himself and for others, as the Bible says, talking about for the people to go in. And he could only do it one time a year. And that was on the Day of Atonement. Oh, but through all that, the Holy Ghost was signifying. The Holy Ghost was showing. What was the Holy Ghost showing? What was the Holy Ghost pointing toward? Toward Jesus Christ, yeah. the great high priest. Amen. And I tell you, the Holy Ghost today, Jesus said when he has come, when the spirit of truth has come, he'll not testify of himself, but of me. Yeah. Amen. He'll speak of me, and he'll speak of that that I have given unto him. Yeah. Amen. Given unto him to speak. <laughs> Here in verse 11 of Hebrews 9, but Christ being come. <laughs> In other words, Jesus has come. Christ being come and high priest of good things. Jesus came to this earth. He was anointed in the river Jordan, the great high priest. I tell you, the holy oil was poured upon him. The Holy Ghost in the form of a dove lit upon him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. But it's the Holy Ghost that was seen to find in the Old Testament. It's the Holy Ghost that came down and anointed him for service there in the banks of the Jordan River. It's the Holy Ghost that came down on the day of Pentecost. Amen. In answer uh, to the Lord's prayer to the Father. And now, amen, as those uh, uh, disciples were obedient under the command of Christ and tarried until they were endued with power from on high. And now uh, Jesus tells us, ask for the Holy Ghost. Ask for the Holy Ghost. Lord bless you this morning. God fill us all with His Spirit every day. Every day. Amen. In Acts 2 it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah couple of chapters over. I see them praying again after they have been under great persecution and the church comes together and the place where they were was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. You say, wouldn't they feel back over here? Yeah. Amen. But they needed uh, refreshing. They needed that filling again. That continuance. That's the way we need it, brethren. That's why the Lord's designed. That's why He set up in His gospel church. Amen. For us to come together on the first day of the week. Amen. Uh, uh, to be renewed and be refreshed and to be reminded in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. That will make thee wise unto salvation. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to quit. God bless you is my prayer. Let's, let's get a song and we'll stand together.